Welcome to the Companion Chapel Everyday Bible Study Broadcast. My name is Mike, coming to you from the Great Lakes area of beautiful Ontario, Canada, on this gorgeous Monday, October 30th, 2023. Coming right up, seals, trumps, vials. We're going to do the first seal, the first trump, and the first vial. Let's understand what seals, trumps, vials means in the Bible. Seals reveals the details of the source of the tribulation that we're living it. We're in it right now. The trumps reveals the actions. That's what a trumpet does. It signifies an action. The actions of the tribulation we're in right now. And the vials, or bulls, reveals the effective results of the tribulation that we're in right now. Now, I study from the manuscripts through the lexicons because the student has to understand the etymology and the prophetic and biblical usage of key words from the original language manuscripts through the lexicons and out from Engle any English version you prefer. Now let's open the book and let it speak for itself. Please turn with me in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 6. And this is so easy to understand and we have such a great advantage over all the generations before us to understand this because we can see it playing out on the world stage today. Jesus Christ told us all things. This runs exactly as Jesus Christ told us in Matthew chapter 24, seals, trumps, files, Revelation chapter 6 and verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. I can't ignore this, is what Johnny's saying. One of the four beasts saying, come and see. Stop right there. Listen, I found 20 words, even 21, different words in the Bible, in the original language manuscripts that mean 20 different things that the translators just dump the word beast in there. It's so unfortunate, but I'll point it out every time. It just must have been the word of the day back then, just back in 1611 working for King James, just translating this out. What are you going to put there? Beast. Yo, that's beast, man. It's beast. This beast is zoi. Okay, this is from Isaiah chapter 6 and Ezekiel chapter 1. It's God's four living creatures on his throne. Okay, and they're participating in the seals here. Come and see, Johnny. You got to write it down. That's your great commission right off the first page of the book of Revelation. Write these things down for us today and for all the people that have read this before, but for us in the here and now. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth to conquer and conquering. Now let's use the biblical usage of these words for understanding. White denotes trustworthiness. Horse throughout the Bible denotes mobile power, an expressive, revealing mobile power. And it, this has a crowning authority. And it's gone through the earth to conquer and to conquer. We're talking about to change attitudes, values, and beliefs, to change your religious authority. Do not be deceived. The key word here is bow. This word bow in the manuscripts is toxin. Okay, so this is a toxic, this is a toxic focus power with the delivery right to the iris of your eye. We're talking psychological warfare. Let's go through the Bible. John was a Hebrew man, don't forget. Johnny that wrote this down for us. He wrote the book of John, the epistles of John, and here the book of Revelation. One of Christ's apostles, he's referred to as the one Christ loved. Bow. Let's just go through the Bible because the word bow like this is not used again in the New Testament. So we have to think. John is thinking in Hebrew. He's a scholar of the manuscripts. He got to hang out with Jesus Christ himself, our teacher, our master, our rabbi, our wonderful counselor, wisdom personified. Let's go back in the Bible. Bow, Jeremiah chapter 9, 3. They bend their tongues like a bow for lies talking about deception here this mobile power with a crowning authority tripping true to and forth the earth they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth they proceed from evil to evil and they know not me saith the lord psalms 11 now, i got a few spots here i could do this for quite a while i just picked out a few the wicked bend their bow that they may from darkness shoot at the upright in heart if the foundations and this is a great Hebrew word, hashashath. That's the settled order of truth be destroyed. If the settled order of truth be destroyed by these wicked that bend their bow, what can the righteous do? 
not say or think, but lawfully or effectively, what can we do when there's all this deception going on to change people's religious authority? Remember, my heathen friends all the time say, I'm not religious. I just say to them, and you say this to your friends too, a religion just means follower of one's own beliefs as defined in the Bible in the book of James. Follower of one's own beliefs. It's what you believe in. Worship just means what you have faith in. Do you have faith in God or do you have faith in rich white man's ideologies? And remember what ideologies are outside of God's word. That's idolatry. Okay, let's go somewhere else. Psalm 78 They tempted and provoked the Most High God and kept not His testimonies. They turned back and dealt unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow. See the word where bow is used in the Bible? Hosea 7, 16. They return not, but to the Most High. They are like a deceitful bow. They have changed their religious authority from God's word, God's instructions, God's commandments that we are to obey to get back to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension. We fell out of harmony with the universe. Don't let somebody change your religious authority. They turned aside like a deceitful bow. They will fall because of the rage from their tongue. We're talking about what comes out of people's mouths, what comes out of their spirit, the intellect of their soul, to change your religious authority. Okay, there you have it. There's the simplest one. Do not be deceived. That's the first one. Now, I'm going to I'm gonna go to Revelation. We're going to do the first trump, obviously, because they all run concurrent. And this is the easiest thing to understand. But before I go there, people that say, listen, I'm pre-trib. I'm going to fly out of here before the tribulation. I'm mid-trib. I'm a, who do you think you are, man? That's what I don't understand. Listen, I pointing fingers at people is forbidden in the Bible. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I'm just asking. And I feel like teeing off on these people sometime because God says, listen, feed my sheep. Don't go around teaching people to fly to save their souls. That's forbidden in the Bible. Ezekiel chapter 13. And when people say, I'm not going to go through the tribulation. I'm going to fly out here. Who do you think you are? We all are in the tribulation. Let's open the book and let it speak for itself. Go to John chapter 16. And there's a few places that of many, many places were in the tribulation now, right from birth. Even back then, these things I have spoken unto you, Jesus Christ speaking, you pre-trib, mid-trib people. And rapture's not even in the Bible. The English argument and the Latin argument that people try and use against me is pointless. It was written in here. Original Hebrew, original Greek. I study from the manuscripts through the lexicons. And I do this for you. I'm not pointing fingers at these people. I'm just asking. Jesus Christ speaking. These things I have spoken unto you that you might have peace. That means peace of mind. There's going to be no peace on planet earth until the Prince of Peace returns at the seventh file, seventh seal, seventh trump. As it's written throughout the Bible over and over, this book is so repetitive. Jesus Christ continues. This is John 16. In the world you shall have tribulation. Does it say, except for you lovely people you and your American evangelical tradition, you people are going to fly away. Listen, I'm going to tee off. I think I'm going to have a new, this is episode 476, and I think I need a new section in these episodes where I get to tee off on not individuals, but ideologies. And that's coming up. I can feel it. I know I was told to settle down in these podcasts. I know I've been having troubles with lots of other platforms dropping me, censoring me. We're in the dynasty of censorship right now, censorship of the truth. So that was expected. And now I'm over here on Rumble, and I hope this works out a little bit better. But let's go to the book of Thessalonians and chapter 2. Now we know 1 Thessalonians and we know where these guys get this rapture theory from. From 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And I would ask you, could you just read? It's on the same page, man. Here it is. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. In this, this is the most common printed book uh, edition. This is the most printed book on planet Earth. It's the best-selling book on planet Earth. Your Bible. Do you see 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, which explains 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 in infinite detail, is on the same page. Okay? 
we'll go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 where it says, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith and in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Tribulations. Then it goes on to say, suffer, tribulations, trouble. It goes on. And then in chapter 2, don't be shaken in mind or troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter by us. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 or, cha or 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Don't be troubled as to the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. There shall come a falling away first. That's the great apostasy, the great falling away from the truth. And the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God or all that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Well, that's written way back in Ezekiel chapter 14. What's it say there? The exact same thing. Then Jesus Christ comes after. As it's written here, just keep reading Thessalonians chapter 2. I don't want to get too, I don't want to digress too far, but I know Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 14 carries on to say, after the leader of the central enemy emerges, that we're waiting for now, we're in the dynasty of censorship, obviously. The seals, chumps, and vials have materialized, harmonized, and culminated into the fifth, waiting for the central enemy to emerge, and then Jesus Christ comes. With the voice, shout the archangel. We know. Well, what's he say? What's going to happen to Satan? It says, Satan, I'm going to mop you up in a bucket and slosh you down the sides of the pit. And everybody that carries your ideologies is going down there with you. And they're going to be comforted in the nether parts of the earth because they want it. They like it. They like all the perpetual drama and the hate and the fighting and the pointing fingers. That's their comfort zone. And we see that playing out on planet earth today comforted in the other parts of the earth they want to be there god's fair now let's go to revelation okay so i was just talking about uh the word tribulation there and i hope i didn't digress too far but it's kind of a hot topic with me right now because someone tried to uh, prove me wrong outside the bible with people's commentaries don't be a commentary bandit open the book and let it speak for itself or find yourself a bible teacher that knows this book better than cat in the hat like i do yeah i know this book better than dr seuss's cat in the hat there's no doubt about it i john also am your brother and companion in tribulation that's the first chapter of the book of revelation verse 9 now let's go to this one this is the greatest thing get all hollywood portrayals and artist depictions out of your mind which are just there to deceive you to change your religious authority to think that you're going to fly out of here ezekiel chapter 13 i am against those who teach my children to fly to save their soul okay you stick it out to the end matthew 24 um blessed are those who endure to the end that's us. We have to fight for the whole human family to try to get people to come back to God right to the end. Here we go. First, Trump. This is the greatest thing. I just love this. And the first angel sounded. This is in concurrent. This has happened already. The first angel sounded. And there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and were cast upon the earth and a third part of the trees was burnt up and all the green grass was burnt up. Let's just unpack this. This is just too easy. Using biblical usage of the words how God is teaching us. Hail is used figuratively to describe the destructive force of God's judgment on evil by exposing it. Hail literally means to let loose. That's what it means. It's a pictorial language, not a hyphographical language. Pictorial language. The original Hebrew and Greek languages paint a picture in your mind to allow you understanding. You keep reading your Bible and you'll find these key words, not necessarily in the English, but I'll point them out to you from the book of Genesis, the entire Bible in its entirety. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, all the way to Revelation chapter 22, verse 21. And I'll show you these key words that run threads through the Bible for understanding. They run threads through the Bible. It's a pattern I found. It's God's trademark stamp of validity. 
Those threads that run through the Bible make up the structural fabric of the key of David itself for understanding and interpretation. Hail, used figuratively to describe the destructive force of God's judgment on evil, it has to be exposed. All the evil in the world comes from the human heart and it's instigated by this one Satan. It has to be exposed. Hail means to let loose. In Matthew 26, one of the most worstly, bizarrely translated verses, not translated, interpreted, like Jesus Christ was trying to get out of this, as if Jesus Christ lets us know there is no other way to destroy. He's there sweating bullets. There's no other way to destroy the negative energy found in human free will entities. Either let those negative thought patterns go or die with them. This is a hail of deception. Do not be deceived, Matthew 24. The first time hail is used in the Bible is actually just chapter 9, verse 18. It is connected with the word grievous. Hey, that brings us to the first vial. Don't you know, some grievous sore. We'll be there in a minute. Don't you dare miss that. What is grievous? A heavy, oppressive burden. It's the, it's the Hebrew word kabad, by the way. And in the Greek, it's paneros. It's a heavy, oppressive burden of iniquity, of heavy, dull speech from the tongue in abundance. So if you're going to look up words outside the Bible or ask somebody that knows how to speak Greek or English today, like conversational Greek or English, you're not going to get the word. You're not going to understand how this is a dead language. To understand the Bible, the student must understand the etymology the prophetic and biblical usage of the key words. Like people that know how to speak today's Hebrew and today's Greek, their claims of knowledge to the original Hebrew and Greek are a major hindrance to true understanding of the Bible. Okay, so we go back and we look, look at this kavod. What does this mean? Grievous. Heavy, oppressive burden of iniquity, of heavy, dull speech from the tongue in abundance. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. We're talking about hail and Get those artist depictions out of your mind. I want to tell you something before I even get to the word fire here. Hail fire with blood. And these, this is where I tee off. I've had it. Listen, man. Listen, you people. I pray for all of you. I pray for the whole human family. Jesus Christ knows that in my heart. But if you're teaching people that you're going to rapture out of here, and then you're telling them we're going to be up there in heaven, sitting in lawn chairs while this tribulation is going on, and there's some people, what do you think? We're going to be sitting there with a bunch of snowballs and fire and then pour some crud on everybody, blood? That's Hollywood. What do you think God is? Do you think God's like a Hitler and he's going to be torturing human beings? He says, you'll be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. You reject me. You don't want me. You don't want anything to do with me. You can go somewhere else. Lake of fire. And we're going to talk about this now. Lake of fire. Lake. And the edemol, it, that word means harbor. It means haven. And we're going to talk about what does fire mean right now. Hail of deception. Fire. Now, literal fire. And burning emotional fire do the same thing. They disrupt the systematic order of things and destroy the purpose of function. We're talking about emotional fire here. Fire is used to describe discord. That's lack of harmony between things because of disagreement between people. Fueled by the internal passion of the mind and the effective results by reason of the destructive power it exercises. That's the biblical usage of the word fire. No, we're not sitting up there God's not torturing human beings. That's not my God. My God's not a Hitler. My God's not a Stalin. That's just the most, you should be embarrassed of yourself to think that, that we're going to be sitting up here watching human beings get burned by a Hitler, Stalin. What's that, a Schittler? I'll try to pull it together here. Between things. Okay, James 3. We pray for the whole human family. All the angels rejoice when one of us repents. Do you think you want to see people that decide, like my buddies over there that don't believe in God? Do you think you want to see them getting burned with fire and having blood poured on them and we're sitting there throwing snowballs at them? 
God says, you don't want it, you can have it. I'll put you there. I'll put you somewhere else where you guys can have perpetual arguing, perpetual drama, perpetually pointing fingers at each other for eternity because that's what you want. That's not what we want. We want to get back to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension. It's not watching other human beings get torched and have sores on them like scabs. Oh, here's my summer scab. Thanks, guys. Right? The tongue is a fire. It is James chapter 3. Here's your biblical definition of fire. The tongue is a fire. It boasts great things. Behold how great a little fire kindleth. The tongue is a fire that defileth the whole body and set on fire the historic, the present, and future times of mankind and is the fire of hell. That's what hellfire is. Hell's not a giant barbecue of people hosted by God. You sick puppy with your rapture. We're going to rapture and we're going to watch people suffer. And I had somebody from the biggest university Biggest Christian university, one in Virginia. I'm not mentioning any names when I'm teeing off here. It's my tee off time. I'm just disappointed that you're teaching people this. He said to me, you're going to feel good when you see people that upset you suffer. What, getting their skin burned? Or are you going to be sitting there with a, with a bunch of hailstones and throwing them at people? God's fair. God's a God of love. And he gives people what they want. You don't want to believe in God. You can go play somewhere else, man. And you're, as it's written in the book of Ezekiel twice, you'll be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. This word comforted is nakam in the Hebrew. It's onomatopoic. And it means just that. Nakam, come on, listen to me. I'm always right. I'm going to tell you why I'm right. And if you disagree with me, I'm going to villainize you. I'm going to shame you. I'm going to insult you. You can have it. You can have all that construct. You don't want God to be a religious authority. That's your free will choice. God's got nothing to prove to you. We have everything to prove to God. We're in a fallen condition. We fell out of harmony with the universe. God's not going to physically torture human beings. You rapture people. Do not be deceived by these people. He lets it. That's what they want. They want to be over there. Harbor, this is the fire. The internal passion of the mind. They can go at each other for an eternity trying to prove each other right. Hey, if you agree with me, then I win. But if you disagree with me, my ego, my self-pride, everything else that's down there in hell, you're comforted because that's your comfort zone. People love it. You can have it. It's not for all of us. We want to get out of here. Me, you want to get back to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension. It's a place of perpetual friendship, a place of unity, a place of completeness, a place of safety. And we want to get on with the affairs of time as God created us, not in these nasty, nuisance, flesh bodies. God's trying to get your attention. Consider the affairs of time and infinity forward, infinity back, and the hundred years or less that you have to come to terms with what's inside of you that is not conducive to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension. God's not having a human barbecue and we're not going to be sitting up there enjoying it, having a feeling of empowerment. Oh, good. There's those guys that I'd never liked and I'm glad to see them getting snowballs thrown at them and their burnt skin. That's not what it means. The rapture theory is satanic. Don't let these people change your religious authority. We all have to go through tribulation as it's written. God has to test us to see what's inside of us. Okay, James 3. Hellfire. Hell's not a giant barbecue of people hosted by God. James 3, 6. This word, setteth on fire, is one Greek word. It's phlogizo. Phlogizo. And it means of that which destructive influences are kindled, inflamed with passion. The original language words paint a picture in your mind that can't be erased, but you have to block out Hollywood's depictions. Mainstream anything is a lie. Mainstream Christianity, mainstream media. Many are, cho many are called, few are chosen. As Jesus Christ said, do not be deceived. As it's written, Inflamed with passion. And if you want to look that up, it's in your Strong's Concordance. G 
5394 or page 763 of your Scott Liddell lexicon. I, you know, if you don't like lexicons, I'll do it for you. I sit here for no less than six to ten hours a day studying, and then I try and find a clean shirt and brush my hair and uh, try and do a video. It's all just me by myself. By the way, the Companion Chapel is a registered nonprofit ministry. Whatever God given talent you have, God expects you to use it in the many member body of Christ. How glorify, magnify, and broadcast God's saving word with whatever God given talent you have. It's just me here by myself. I registered a nonprofit to prove there's no financial interest in the outcome of the hundreds of videos that I do and the thousands of hours I've studied because I want us all to come back to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension. Me, you, everybody, I pray for us all to submit to the Lord Jesus Christ with an unquestioning obedience, to surrender our entire existence to the Lord Jesus Christ with an unquestioning obedience. Jesus Christ, you're the only one I trust. You're the only one I love. As it's written in Jeremiah chapter 17, 5, trust, or, trust God if you trust in man, your curse. The word of God saturate me with your holy spirit cover me with your veil wrap me with your vesture i'm praying this for you please hold my hand my lord jesus christ you are my shepherd i shall not want another shall not want another you are my rock you are my only stability you are my fortress my high tower you are my only protection my lord jesus christ I repent to you you are the only one worthy that can forgive me for my sins that's the most important thing to recognize what Lord Jesus Christ did, the most selfless act of love and compassion beyond our present comprehension, was Calvary at the cross, where prophecy became in accordance with the Word of God, in accordance with reality. Only Jesus Christ can forgive you at a judicial level that is universally recognized for your sins. And only Jesus Christ can grant you judicial clearance back into the kingdom of heaven. Unless you don't want to be there, then you It'll be another construct like this. And you can just have it. All the systems, the mankind's system of things, mankind's 100% failure rate of governing themselves, that's the fire, the internal passion of the mind. That's what the Bible means by fire. Let's go on. The tongue, no man can tame. Back to James 3, 6. We're talking about fire. It is unruly and full of death-bearing poison. Do you see how the first trump ties in to that bowl, the toxic bowl, poison, poison messages, poisoning your mind, your psyche, that's your spirit, that's the intellect of your soul, your soul is an energy, your spirit is an energy, together they make up your identity, it's a closed system, the laws of thermodynamics were written in the Bible thousands of years before Einstein figured it out, open system, your physical matter can be exchanged, with its surroundings. That's the physical body. We don't want this anymore. 100 years or less, it's out of here. Physical body. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. But what about your psyche, your spirit, the intellect of your soul? It's a life force. It's a closed system. Your psyche, your spirit has boundaries that makes you an individual. No physical matter can be exchanged in and out of your psyche, your spirit. Only energy in the form of information can be exchanged. In the Bible, that information is called the light. We follow the greater of the two unique light givers, that masculine noun, Maor, from Genesis chapter 1, runs a thread through the Bible. The greater of the two unique light givers. He is the light. He is the truth, that great separating force between right and wrong, good and evil, and heaven and hell. Let's talk about fire again here. It's a hail of deception. And fire cast to the earth this has been going on since well jesus christ told us we're in tribulation back then and now remember john chapter 16 we're in tribulation then and we're in tribulation now nothing's changed I'll try to stay on subject here the tongue no man can tame it is unruly it is full of death bearing poison there's your first seal there's the bow psalms 39 fire is used of burning emotion Isaiah chapter 9, if you want to know what the fire is, Isaiah chapter 9, 14 to 21, fire is used to describe flagrant, flag, flagrant wickedness. People are the fire. The emotion that they have. Morally corrupt people. What is morals? Morals is on the individual of personal thought patterns that translate into intentions and actions. It's the individual. But ethics is is a set of institutional standards that collective individuals establish governmental systems. They're all down there in that harbor, that haven, that lake of 
fire, the internal passion of the mind. And they're comforted there. That's where they want to be. Fire is used to burning emotion. Deuteronomy 32, what about God? God speaking. A fire is kindled in my anger. Yeah, his emotions. God's emotional. He's supernatural. He wants his children back. They can only be reconciled through the Lord Jesus Christ. Through repentance. Repentance means change of heart. You can't be nursing along. You can't be conceiving and nursing along ideologies outside the Word of God. What's going to happen? When Remember that flaming fire at the Garden of Eden. We're all kicked out. We can't get back in. We have to face that fire to get back into the Garden of God, Paradise, the Garden of Eden. We have to face that fire. And if we're carrying ideologies outside of the Word of God, if we're burning up with emotion against the Word of God, that fire is going to burn us right down out. Get out of here. While Jesus Christ talked with, listen, in Luke 3, 24, did not, this is what Jesus, this is what it says. Did not our heart burn within us while Jesus Christ talked with us while he opened to us the scriptures? Your heart burns when you hear the truth. It's bittersweet as it's written in the book of Revelation. That's what John said. It's bittersweet because it's sweet to know that we have a way out, but it's bitter watching all these people walking in darkness. It's just, the, it's just brutal. And we feel for them. We pray for the whole human family. You pray for your enemies like this. Listen, give it up. Give up those ridiculous ideologies. Or you're going to end up with other people just like you. And you're going to have the same construct as planet Earth today. Which what is? To be out of harmony with God is discord. It's strife. It's conflict. It's chaos. Hostility. Division. Disunity. Incompatibility. Hostile hatred. The list goes on. You know these people. Okay, that's fire. I think we covered that pretty extensively. Hail and fire mingled, mingled with blood. Well, blood's your life force. And we know from the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Leviticus, and the book of Genesis, that that's your life force. We have fury indignation of the mind mingling with your blood, your life force. Your soul is in your blood. Like I said, Genesis, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, okay? Your soul is in your blood, as it's written. Cain's bl or Abel's blood cried out. His soul cried out. Listen, I still had things to do, and I got murdered. Okay, so you had better govern your spirit accordingly. Remember that God owns all souls. Ezekiel chapter 18. And your spirit is your free will. God will not violate the principles of free will. You cannot violate the principles of God without consequence. Let's, go, let's finish this one with blood. Okay, this is... A hail of deception from the eternal passion of the mind right from people's life force is cast on the earth. A third of the trees was burnt up. We are the one third. We know that from God calling us stars, bright shining life forces. Job chapter 37. All the stars, that's Kahab in the Hebrew, bright shining life forces sang for joy. The whole human family in totality in infinite felicity shouting out and singing for joy. Revelation 12.4 one third of the stars followed Satan. That's me, that's you. Genesis chapter 1. I've never heard anybody teach the first pages of the Bible properly, especially uh, day 4, one day of the Lord is a thousand years. God sets the stage for this earth age. He sets up two unique light givers, that word mayor, that masculine noun that runs through the Bible for the word light, never used of a planet. Stars as person is Jesus Christ, Math Numbers 24. Jesus Christ is that star out of Jacob. In the Song of Deborah, fighting stars. Psalms, praising stars. The first page of Revelation chapter 1. The angels are the stars. Stars as person is chapter 9. And star fell from heaven. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Tribes, describes us as stars. We are the stars, God's bright shining life forces, his angels, the hosts of heaven, clouds of witnesses. Biblical usage of the word. We are the one third that fell. Me, you get that into you. It's very daunting to think to the point of self mortification. I'm one of the one third. Okay, but at least Jesus Christ gave us a way out. 
He did not have to do that. He did not have to manifest a little lower than the angels and walk amongst us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and tabernacled amongst us. He's your teacher, your master, your rabbi, your savior, your salvation, your deliverer, your redeemer, and the kinsman redeemer of the whole human family. Most precious in the universe, only begotten Son of God. You pray, you repent to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you mean it. I have a change of heart. I don't repent because of consequences or because of annoyances. I repent because I mean it. I don't think like that anymore. It's not in the construct of my psyche, my spirit. It's not my thoughts, my intents, my actions anymore. I submitted to the Lord with an unquestioning obedience. We are the one-third. Trees throughout the Bible over and over. We're likened to trees. We are In Isaiah, we are to be trees of righteousness. Read Matthew chapter 7, 17 to 19. Wolves in sheep's clothing, like into trees. What do they produce? Evil? Or do they produce good? We are like into trees. We root in. We branch out. Ezekiel chapter 31 tells us what the tree is, the tree of knowledge and good and evil, and we still have American evangelical pastors, preachers, whatever, in Canada, everywhere. It's their tradition to draw a picture of a tree. How does a tree shroud the entire planet? Tree means upright. It actually means your spine. It's in the Hebrew. We are trees. We are the one-third. We are burnt up inside. We just went over that with the internal passion of the mind, especially even when you find the truth. It just burns you up. What these people are doing governmental leaders and unelected world leaders through the pursuit of profit through attitudes of obscene entitlement fueled by ruthless unadulterated greed destroying the planet money over people sacrifice humanity for short term profit all's fair in business child labor, labor exploitation, war, genocide destroy the planet hey that construct is going to be harbored also known as lake haven in the lake of fire. It's not a barbecue, man. It's where those, that internal passion of the mind is. You guys can have it. You love it, obviously, because the majority of the world's playing into it. We're, yeah, we're burnt up. It's not your tree on your front lawn and grass. All the green grass was burnt up. We are the grass. Isaiah chapter 40. It goes on and on how we are the grass. We're likened to grass. Isaiah chapter 40. Psalms 103. Psalms 90. Psalms 92. The list goes on. We're here one day, we're gone the next. One day it's the Lord is a thousand years. We're just a hundred years or less. Consider the affairs of time, infinity forward, infinity back. This little vapor of time, as James says it. Jesus Christ is giving us a chance. God, Yahweh, our loving Father, is giving us a chance through Yeshua Messiah to get back into harmony with the universe. So you understand that. That's us. Hail of deception. Fueled by the internal passion of the mind. With your life force, people's life force. This first seal, chump, and vial is on morals. Like I said, morals is the benchmark for human values and human virtue. We're seeing the moral decay of society all around us right now. A morally corrupt society living by ethically corrupt institutional standards. Morals is on the individual. Don't allow your religious authority to be changed. They try to reduce your ability to think critically and independently, to change attitudes, beliefs, to change your religious authority. Propaganda to persuade public opinion. It's actually cool to sit back and mock Christians. These people think it is. Try it on me, man. I just bury these people in etiquette. With love, there has to be a balance between knowledge and grace. That's compassion. I have compassion on them, but bring it. You will never be able to beat me when it comes to the truth. I have a linear progression towards the truth that rolls off my tongue like nobody's business. And when they come at me, I always think, hey, the power of a mocker and a scoffer always lies within accusation, never fact. You see that glow on the mocker's face is always illuminated by their own persistent unbelief, chronic disobedience. And I used to say, their own imaginative criticism. It's not even their imagination. They're in a cult. 
And the only cult people never see is the one they're in. They've been brainwashed. It's meant to side. It's mind control. It's psychological warfare. They all they can do. Their argument never stands up to closer scrutiny. All they've been done is all that's happened to them is major media has trained them to throw out one of their pre-approved insults at me. And then I can bury them in biblical etiquette gently. Pointing fingers at others is forbidden in the Bible. Be gentle with others. Once you get a working knowledge of the Bible, you can sit in any construct with any people. The most heathen people are up here. There's no doubt about it. Here's Michael. He's going to talk about God again. Then I just leave them stupefied. But because of their ego, they go back to major media, Netflix and these documentaries, and then they go back to like evangelical tradition, these churches, these churchy churches that are just void of truth. And they try and pick up Katrina, try and laugh at me and stuff like that. I just put them in their place. It's easy. Get a working knowledge of the Bible. And they still, you know, I'm still invited all the time and very much liked. I would think, I, I would suggest I'm somewhat of a likable person. I'm not too sure about that, but anyways, who cares? Just trying to make it through the day. Let's go to the uh, first vial. And here we have it. And the first went out and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell anoint some grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped the image. Anoint some grievous as Keikos, Palneros. In the original language, Greek, Keikos means... Your thoughts and your intents, evil thoughts, evil intents, and grievous, we went over, is Poneros, it means evil actions. you got an oozing evil sore right on your soul. Mark of the beast is as simple as this. It's your thoughts, your intents, and your actions. Is that the mark that you go by? Is that the mark you shoot for? Is that what you aim for when you're thinking, what's in it for me? How do I benefit off this? How can I get more? It's all about me. Uh, yeah, I have a detached concern for other people, but let's just see about that as soon as it comes. Is, is, is my spiritual life limited by what? Anyways, I think I've had enough for today. And I haven't done a video in a long time. Yeah, it beat me up a little bit, quite a bit, getting censored and suspended off this one media outlet or social media outlet then another one sends me things that says you know you're violating guidelines we're going to take down your work and you don't even have a place where you can what what did i say what did i do you know it's just you have to press god it and you know who's complaining against me mainstream christians listen man it's forbidden to point fingers in the bible if i've helped you please help me keep bringing these to you and Campaign Chapel is a registered nonprofit, and if you're a Christian person that doesn't agree, then let's go through the manuscripts, document it through the lexicons, and I'll show you the threads for understanding. Don't forget, there's a millennium period. That's a priestly kingdom where we all come together, everyone who has unadulterated faith and belief in the Lord, so we can have relief in the Lord in the millennium period. Trust or you won't be trusted. Always seek the Lord out and inquire for understanding so that you can stand. Listen, I love you to pieces. Have yourself the greatest day, and bye for now.